New videos every day. I like to know things. Where did life come from? How did life come about? Saw some videos on YouTube dealing with the subject of the origin of life or what science calls abiogenesis, and I thought I'd make some comments on it. Okay, so before I get started, I want to say I'm not a young earth creationist or anything. I'm not trying to defend creationism particularly. Um, I am going to talk about abiogenesis, though, right? You know, I technically am agnostic on the subject. I don't know how life started. Now, if you talk to a person who is a theist and you say, well, how did life begin? They may say, well, God created life. But if you ask them, well, how did God create life? They're going to say, well, I don't know. Now, if you go to a scientist who's been working on this problem of abiogenesis or the origin of life and say, how did life come about? He'll say, well, we really don't know, but here's some ideas we have about it. You know, that's the first point. Nobody really knows exactly how it happened. We have these different theories on it, but nobody's really quite sure how. Okay, now the word abiogenesis comes from a meaning not, bio meaning life, and genesis meaning beginning. So it's not life beginning. So it's the idea of how living matter developed from non-living matter. Now, actually, which is kind of interesting about this, is both a materialist and a person who believes in some supernatural or spiritual force in the universe, both agree that this has actually happened. Even in the Christian Bible, it talks about how the heavens and the earths were actually created before man was. Uh, in Genesis, it talks about how God fashioned the body of Adam out of mud, which basically means non-living material, but then breathe the breath or spirit of life into Adam so that he was living, right? So both groups actually agree that abiogenesis occurred. Of course, logically it had to have occurred. You know, we all believe that, you know, there was non-living matter before life. So the question isn't did it occur or not, but the question is how it occurred. So Scientists have been trying to figure out how this could have occurred without an agency or a cause or a supernatural cause. You know, how could life just evolve from nothing? You know, or how could it just come about without any type of causative agency? Um, and that's where we get this, the theory of abiogenesis as opposed to the fact that it really happened. Okay, so scientists have been trying to explain how non-living matter could become life, and they've come up with these different theories of abiogenesis. But there's actually no standard model in science for this. Nobody's come up with an explanation that's good enough that everybody can agree on it, basically. So there's a lot of things that different scientists, a lot of different ideas, and a lot of things that different scientists don't agree on. One of these things is, where did life start, right? Now, some scientists say, or, or the one that most people have heard, or that most people probably accept, is that life started in the ocean, right? Um, but some scientists think that it could have possibly started at the bottom of the ocean near volcanic vents. Some other scientists believe that it possibly came in the form of a simple extraterrestrial bacterium or something that fell to the earth on a meteor. I actually saw an article just three weeks ago where a scientist came up with a new theory that life actually evolved in the ground and bacteria in, in the earth. So scientists can't really agree where life started. Um, another thing they can't really agree on is how it started, like in, in what sequence. So you have all these different models or theories of abiogenesis, and there are about two dozen of them at least. Um, in fact, I, I'd bet you money if you went to Wikipedia and you looked up abiogenesis, it'll probably give you about 10 to 12 different theories of it. And these different theories are going to be defined in terms of how did it start, at what point. 
And some of the theories are going to say that it was the genes that happened first, or it was the RNA that happened first, or that it was metabolism that happened first, or that it was the buildup of cellular walls that happened first. But there's no actual agreement on how it actually happened or in what sequence it happened. So these different ideas about how this has happened are actually just that. They're just ideas about how it could have happened, right? And, and in science, we call that models. Now, some models are purely theoretical in science, meaning that, you know, it's just an idea that exists in somebody's head. Then you can also have something called a working model where, you know, you've experimentally demonstrated that the model would work, right? So in terms of abiogenesis, a working model would be here's an explanation of how it could occur, and we can actually duplicate that in a laboratory, make it happen, and create life from non-living life. Now, that's something that hasn't been done, and in fact, it's something that's never been observed by human beings. Nobody's ever observed non-living matter become life, right? So we have 20 different models. None of them are working models. They're all theoretical ideas. None of them have been duplicated in a laboratory. And that's pretty much where science is at. All right, so now I'm going to go into the biology of this a little bit, give you an understanding of, of kind of how this is supposed to happen, right? Now, your body is made out of cells, and your cells are made out of these complex molecules called proteins. And these complex proteins are made out of simpler molecules that are called amino acids. And those amino acids are made out of elements or atoms, right? Now, specifically, amino acids are made out of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Okay, so I'm going to refer to this scale of atoms to amino acids to amino acids to proteins and proteins to cells or a single cellular organism to explain or give some reference to the idea of abiogenesis, right? Um, first thing, amino acids, You're, they're carbon-based molecules, meaning they have a carbon in the center of them. Um, your average amino acid, I'm, I'm guessing here, but it's probably pretty accurate, has maybe about 15 atoms on it. So you have 15 different atoms that have to come together in the correct way in order to form an amino acid. Uh, now, proteins. <laughs> Amino acids are organized into proteins. This is what your DNA tells the cell how to do. It tells it how, in what sequence do I put amino acids together in order to create a protein? Your average protein has about two to 300 amino acids in the perfect sequence to create a workable protein. Some proteins are actually incredibly large. You have a single protein that's uh, used in heart tissue and your bones, which actually has 17,000 amino acids organized in the correct sequence in order to have that as, as a workable protein. So when you're getting from this step of how do we get from an amino acid to a protein, you're, it's a little more complex than getting from an atom to an amino acid. I mean, we're, it's the difference between you know, 15 different things coming together in the correct order and as many as 17,000 things coming together in the correct order, right? Now, to have a workable protein that the cell can use, not only does it have to be in the correct sequence, you know, which, like I said, could be anywhere from 200 to 17,000 amino acids, but once you have this big, long chain of these molecules, it has to be folded into the correct shape so that the cell can use the protein. And there's actually an apparatus in the cell that after the protein is formed, it's folded into the correct shape so that the cell can use it. So proteins are far, far more complex than, say, amino acids. Um, and a little bit more on that, proteins are so complex that in most cases we can't synthesize proteins that make up humans or animals in a laboratory.